All right, so I have a new idea to spawn camp as spy that I want to try out. So pretty much what we do is we get behind, then we disguise as the enemy team's engineer, and then we just pretend to be AFK. I know, riveting <laughs> new strat. A rite of passage for anybody who makes TF2 videos in current year is discussing weapons and how they're either terrible, too good, or how they exist. Weapon reviews, as they're called, are one of the most common genres of TF2 videos. Some would probably say that uh, weapon These reviews have always seemed like a strange case. Like it or not, discussing items in a 15-year-old video game is a fun thing to do, and although people tend to call the idea formulaic and boring, I still really enjoy watching them. But in the context of an item discussion, no item has been discussed as much as the Diamondback. The Diamondback has been talked to death at this point, people talking about how it's too good and it needs a nerf, and nothing in this world will ever match the unparalleled power of this TF2 revolver. And as someone who has barely used the weapon, I knew something had to be up. Yes, I'm still in the still using the Ambassador camp, and although fun, ever since the nerf, it's been kind of a pain to constantly use. On the other hand, the Diamondback is one of the most ridiculed items in the entire game. Having the same upside since its inception and never getting any balance changes, it's grown a reputation as TF2's most hated weapon. <laughs> Wait, it's grown a reputation as TF2's most hated item. So hated, in fact, that when I ran a poll on my community tab, almost 50% of all the people who voted called the item overpowered. There is so much vitriol for this weapon to the point where something must be up. People don't collectively agree on something being broken unless it is, or a YouTuber says it is. And after thinking it over and using the weapon for a few days, I, I can say that I, I totally agree. Oh my god. This thing is ridiculous. I mean, it's stupid, it's broken, and it's overpowered. <laughs> overpowered. That word's been used a lot recently. If you follow TF2 content in the past year, you've most likely heard it multiple times. From YouTube videos to Discord threads to tweets about people complaining about what they proclaim to be, overpowered. So much so to the point where there's been an argument for literally every item, class, or concept in this game to be so. But what defines overpowered, and how can we be certain that the Diamondback fits this criteria? How can we even believe that this item is truly broken over the hive mind of people who also think that sticky spam or the scout in general is also broken? Well, first things first, what does the word overpowered actually mean? Overpowered in terms of games such as TF2 was defined as an item or a mechanic that is so strong it gives an unfair advantage against other players while not requiring much skill or practice to be viable. Look at items such as the Vaccinator, Scorch Shot, or upgrades like Explode on Impact and MVM, Wobbling, fucking Chamber Ult. All of these things, although wildly different, have been generally accepted by the community at large to be too strong relative to anything related to it. There's also a common consensus that overpowered means risk versus reward, but the risk you're putting yourself in at times isn't dying, it's being completely useless. Look at Sniper, for example. Yeah, the reward can be outstanding if played well, but Pablo Fortnite 2012 isn't going to be doing much either. He may not be dying because he's so far away, but he's also not doing anything productive. He's just sitting there. Dead weight. But the issue with the Diamondback isn't that it's overpowered on its own, it's the mechanic surrounding the item that draws controversy. Guaranteed crits. Guaranteed crits as a mechanic are kind of in a strange place. Generally speaking, this idea of stored crits akin to a crit hack makes it so that any 1v1 scenario can be pretty much cheesed if given the opportunity. But then again, the crits Krieg does it just fine. I don't see anybody complaining about that. So how can we define a good guaranteed crit? Well, let's look at a weapon with the exact same mechanic and see if we can use that as an example of what makes an item overpowered. The Frontier Justice is an unlock for the Engineer that also has a damage reduction and also grants crits as a reward for sentry kills after they've been destroyed. This has led to a lot of people picking up the item because being able to have crits based off of sentry performance seems like a no-brainer. On paper, this item seems just as broken as the Diamondback, a damage resistance with crits that not only rewards you for playing Engineer well, but giving those crits at a time when you most likely need them. So this begs the question, is the Frontier Justice unfun to play against? The answer is yes. This is stupid! Why should the engineer be rewarded for having his sentry die? Before, I had to spend my time and ammo destroying the perfectly aiming killing machine, but now I have to worry about getting one shot by the guy building them? That's not fair! Why should I be punished for something I'm not in control of? It doesn't matter how low your clip size is in a 1v1, because while the NG's reloading, I I'm already dead! But not fun to fight doesn't necessarily mean overpowered. I've said this before and I'll say it again, just because you don't enjoy fighting against it doesn't automatically make it way too strong for its own good. For example, there is a strategy on Dust Bowl where you pocket a flog pyro and completely destroy the enemy team. Now, this strategy is completely counterable with things like the battalions, the machina, or hell, even the direct hit, but the issue is I would rather go through a lobotomy than have to deal with this garbage every single game. And the Frontier Justice fits right into this category. I don't like fighting it, but not because it's too good, it's because it's annoying. Getting hit by one bullet of this thing and hearing that crit sound, even though 
it didn't do that much damage gives this hedonic response of rage. Like, motherfucker, this guy just crit me across the map. But again, because I'm annoyed by it, that doesn't make it overpowered by any means. That with the fact that since it's also a shotgun, the engineer is forced to get close to the enemy if he actually wants to do any damage, which is not where you want to be as the class with the lowest health in the game. The issue, and we'll get to this later, is that since TF2 is a very 1v1 oriented game, most classes are suited for singular target DM, and when focusing on one person at a time, it feels like crap when one person can just decimate you out of nowhere with no input of your own. It's why people hate the Frontier Justice, it's why people hate Sniper, and it's why I hate things like Air Blast. <gasps> No, Pyro, stupid fucking toy. But Spy is different. Spy is generally accepted as the worst class in the game, but any item that made him better has been lambasted by the same people who call him weak. The Dead Ringer, Kunai, Ambassador, and now Diamondback have constantly been complained about. Spy is not meant to be a power class. You're not meant to run up to people and do insane damage to them. Hell, you're not even meant to be seen half the time. When you see a spy, you expect them to die right after. Ah! And when they don't, it's frustrating. After thousands of hours of playing this game and given the preconceived notion that if a spy is seen, he dies, having that idea be shattered because someone equips an item feels a bit unfair, don't you think? Now go on to the next part. I don't remember what I was going to put here, but... <laughs> The Diamondback is a revolver for the Spy that has a 15% damage penalty and no random crits as a trade-off for guaranteed crits when you get a backstab or sap an engineer's building. But I mean, you already know that. You're not stupid. We've already established that this stored crits mechanic is not really the most fun to fight, but I want to harp on something I said earlier. The main issue with the Diamondback is that it feels unfair to die to a guaranteed crit when there was no input on your part to generate it. Crits in general are just really stupid. The fact they still happen randomly should be a crime against humanity itself, but anytime I get hit by a crit or the crit screen, it doesn't really feel fair. Even a guaranteed crit, minus a few exceptions due to a skill barrier or a major sacrifice, feels unfair. The fact that it's guaranteed means jack shit to me because he didn't earn it off me. It's not my fault that some idiot pyro got stabbed. Now this asshole can nearly one shot me over something I had zero control in. It's not fun or interesting to fight. This is why I feel the premise of stored guaranteed crits as a mechanic are flawed. You didn't do anything to warrant getting crit, and unlike a headshot or a crit streak, there isn't much of a skill cap or sacrifice to getting these crits. What, a 15% damage penalty? That won't even be used? Going back to what we constitute as overpowered, the Diamondback has relatively no risk for the amount of reward you're able to achieve. Unlike the Crits Creek, which allows for zero defensive options, the Sniper, which forces you to be tunnel vision and, you know, you need to aim. Or even the Frontier Justice, which reduces your clip by half, the Diamondback ends up being a best of both worlds option, allowing you to play insanely aggressive with almost zero repercussion. The worst thing that you can do is miss. And if you do, just sap another building. And unlike the Frontier Justice, which is a shotgun, the Diamondback is a one bullet revolver. This means that no matter the case, no matter how far away, you will do full crit damage, 102 damage every shot. With one shot, you're able to kill, if not severely cripple any class in the game. And then you could just shoot them again and most likely kill them. I mean, come on, is this really fair? Look at this clip. The medic sees me, I backstab the heavy before he can even turn around, and then I one shot the medic because I stabbed the heavy before. Honestly, if I was that medic, I'd be pissed. This item makes you a more mobile sniper without any of the aim, precision, or practice that a sniper, or hell, even the ambassador required, while effectively negating all the counters a spy has. Pyros? Dead. Razorback snipers? An afterthought. Scouts? See you later. All you need to do is get one backstab, and pair it with items such as the kunai, you will quickly become the dick of the server. But what if there was that aim, precision, or practice that needed to go into the diamondback? Well, there was. And here's my hot take. If that item was never nerfed, this would not be a discussion. Hear me out, before Jungle Inferno, what did the typical spy main use? The Kunai, the Dead Ringer, and 90% of the time, the Ambassador. Sure, you can argue that the Diamondback was still OP, but if you were skilled enough, the Ambassador was able to be the strongest spy revolver by far. Valve in 2018 probably saw how many people used the Ambassador over every spy revolver and decided, hey, maybe 102 damage from anywhere seems a bit unfair. Nerfed the Ambassador damage and didn't lay a finger on the Diamondback. Which is funny because looking back, not a single person actually complained about the Ambassador. People only started complaining after Valve mentioned the nerf. This made it so the less skillful, more consistent critical hit revolver became the obvious his best choice. Because of the honestly unwarranted ambassador nerf and nothing being done to the Diamondback, it instantly became a direct upgrade to its predecessor. Most spy mains switched, and now since the Diamondback is so commonly used, it's been thrown directly into the balance spotlight. And look, that's not to say the Diamondback stats aren't dumb, they are, but it's just that nobody cared about it because no one was using it. And I'm of the firm belief that if the ambassador stats were to be reverted, this issue would most likely go away. Another point for the Frontier Justice is that the engineer's other primaries are great utilities that serve different purposes and can change up the engineer's playstyle drastically. What does the spy get? More cloak? Headshots that do less damage? 
That's bullshit. The reason why the ambassador was so much fun because it rewarded a high skill ceiling. Something that people tend to not enjoy anymore. I guess. The thing is, the Diamondback does the same thing, but unlike the Ambassador, it's so forgiving that it requires exponentially less skill than the Ambassador. I think most of the complaints on the Diamondback are more so people projecting their disdain of Valve lack of consistency than the actual item. Because yeah, the stats are stupid, but it's pretty telling that almost every single thread, tweet, or video that I could find complaining about the Diamondback happened after Jungle Inferno. So why do people hate the Diamondback? Well, my reasoning is that it gives too much of a reward while other spy primaries have been nerfed for doing less. If Valve were to actually get up and nerf the Diamondback, or even better, unnerf the Ambassador, then this item's hate train would all but go away. Although controversial, the Diamondback lives among the ranks as another example of Valve's shit balancing. But honestly, the discussions about nerfing the Diamondback should more so be about unnerfing the Ambassador. Because why have a skill ceiling if people are going to cry nerf when you reach it? My name is Zenith. Thank you for watching.